Alright, hey guys. Uh, in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, your aircraft cylinders and what we typically find when we get cylinders in the shop here. I'll go a little bit through the repair process, tell you what we do to repair these cylinders and explain a little bit the difference between repair and overhauling cylinders. I also have some Instagram questions from you guys that I'll be sure to get to, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see those. And please give this video a thumbs up, that really helps us get our video out there to everybody and we would really like this information to be available for people um, when you're going through that cylinder repair process. We just want everyone to kind of know what to expect and you can have a better understanding before you go into that. Now you got a blooper. <laughs> <laughs> familiar this is an aircraft cylinder and on an aircraft engine the cylinder is removable so one cylinder can be taken off the engine and repaired as necessary I have a couple examples here of what I want to show you um, these cylinders are they're all light combing cylinders parallel valve but I really just wanted these examples here to show you kind of the different stages of the repair process this cylinder is as removed by the mechanic he brought it in here removed rocker shaft, rocker arms, push rod tubes, removed the intake tube, exhaust, and it's just down to a bare cylinder with valves and valve springs in it. And that's kind of most often what we get cylinders like. And this cylinder here has been cleaned up, paint removed, and it's ready for kind of the repair process. Right now it's ready for a valve guide. And then this cylinder here is one that we've repaired and this is ready to go out the door to the customer. So this most often is what you'll kind of see when you pick up a cylinder from us. We always have it in a bag, kept clean and everything, but this is what you can expect at least. So one of the major important things that I wanted to do for you guys here is explain the difference of repairing a cylinder and overhauling a cylinder. Um, this is also similar to a complete engine. You can either repair an engine or overhaul an engine, and there is a difference. Um, the most notably, the difference would be in a, in a overhauled cylinder, you are replacing specific list of parts, no matter the condition of the parts you removed. Now, whereas a repaired cylinder, we can install um, all the parts, as long as they are within limits or meet the specs, we can reinstall those parts like valves and gu guides valve springs. So if an exhaust valve is within limits, we'll go ahead and re reinstall that exhaust valve in a repaired cylinder. However, in an overhauled cylinder, an exhaust valve is one of those parts that we, we want to replace every time for an overhauled cylinder. And there is a Lycoming service bulletin. Um, it is service bulletin 240 and definitely want to check the latest revision of that service bulletin, but that service bulletin is just a breakdown list of every part that should be replaced as new in an overhauled cylinder or engine. So uh, one, one other thing that you'll see on cylinders is different color coding here on the cylinder fins. This one you can see has no other color, it's just the cylinder paint. But the most common thing you're going to see is blue, green, or orange. The blue paint means that it usually from Lycoming factory, it means that it's a nitrated steel bore. So unpainted or blue, both will mean it's a steel standard bore. And that's probably between unpainted or blue are gonna be the most common thing you see. Now if you see orange here on the cylinder fins, then what that means is uh, that cylinder, the steel has worn out and it has been replated with chrome. The other option is green paint. If you have green here on the cylinder fins, then that typically means that the cylinder has been bored oversized. What we do with this at this stage is we get it in here and we just disassemble it. So when we're measuring the bore here, we, we have a dimension for the first several inches, but then we also want to see at the top near the combustion chamber if the cylinder bore is tapering and getting tighter. We, that's what we call choke and we want to see a specific amount of choke in the cylinder. And we, again, for that, have new limits and service limits that we're allowed. So after we've measured the cylinder bore itself, um, we'll go back to the valves that we took out earlier and the valve guides. Intake valve, we see very little wear. Um, not usually worn that much, but there's definitely quite a bit of wear on an exhaust valve most of the time. 
And we have just a specific dim dimension, just like everything else, that we can be within. And if it's worn past that dimension, it's trash. There's nothing we can do about it. And if that's the case, then we just replace it, sometimes with a brand new valve, and sometimes just with a used valve that is good. So the exhaust valve and exhaust guide are our most commonly wore out part. And that's where we typically find an issue if somebody comes in and complains about low compression in their cylinder. We most often assume the exhaust guide is going to be replaced. So right here I have examples of an intake valve and an exhaust valve that came out of this same type of cylinder. The intake valve is so rarely worn out that we can often just clean it up. Um, we do polish the stem and grind the face and then we can just reuse it. The exhaust valve on the other hand is more commonly worn out. So we start by just measuring this um, valve stem diameter and as we measure down we typically see where on the stem diameter in about this area. And in that area, or wherever it's most worn out, we just want to make sure that it's still within limits. So the next step of our cylinder process would be um, prepping the cylinder for Zygo. So after we've already removed the parts, it's down to just the cylinder itself. Uh, there's no valves, valve springs, or anything like that still installed. Um, we start by cleaning up the top and this valve cover area rocker box area, we clean in the ports, both intake exhaust, and then we clean into the main cylinder bar and we clean all the carbon, all of that stuff out of the combustion area. And once all of those internal areas are cleaned, then we can check it for cracks. And um, most often what we find is we find cracks right in the exhaust port or on the inside around the spark plug holes. So the Zygo process is we, we spray a green dye and a Trent dye all over the cylinder and we let that soak for about 15-20 minutes and let it really soak into any possible cracks or faults in the cylinder. We then put a, um, an, what's called an emulsifier over that green dye and that emulsifier will wash off essentially all of the green dye that has not seeped into a crack. So we wash that off, it takes about 3 minutes to kind of um, wash everything away except for what has penetrated into a crack. And then we just rinse it with hot water and that hot water, again, it won't wash away what's seeped into a crack, but it'll wash away everything on the surface. And now using a black light, we can look at the cylinder and whatever green uh, penetrant dye did seep into those cracks, we will be able to see with the black light and it will usually show up as a very bright green light. And that's how we know when we have a cylinder crack. So now assuming that we did uh, do the Zygo process, um, we know that the cylinder is not cracked, it is repairable, the cylinder bore is within limits or we have planned to bore it oversized to keep it within limits. We can now remove whatever valve guides needed to be removed, we can replace the valves that need to be replaced, and we can continue with the repair process. We'll now go ahead and do a final cleaning on the cylinder to make it look like this. Stripped down to the aluminum, no paint left on it, no carbon anywhere. Um, we want it spotless, perfectly clean. The guides that need to be replaced are removed. We can now cut a new valve guide for the cylinder. Um, like in this case, the cylinder is, it has the exhaust guide removed and the intake guide was good, so we left that in there. And so we're ready to install a new exhaust valve guide. And once that valve guide is back installed in the cylinder, the next step is to ream it. And after we ream the valve guide, we run a sizing ball through it, which kind of, the sizing ball brings it to its final dimension and it does give it a really smooth final finish on the valve guide. Once we have valve guides installed, we know we have good valves. We have ground the faces of these valves and we're ready to now grind the valve seats themselves. So we put a, um, a pilot in each guide and then we have grinding stones that we put on the um, on the pilots onto the valve seats and we bring those seats back to the right angles which for an intake valve is 30 thousandths, exhaust valve is always 45 thousandths and then following the grinding of the seat we lap the valve into place so each valve is lapped and it's essentially made it perfectly with that valve seat and after we've ground the seats, lapped the valves, it's now ready to hone the bore honing the bore or boring oversize if necessary. We actually have a, uh, a complete video about cylinder honing and um, I'll be sure to put a link that you can click over to that video. It has stones on it that we run those stones up and down the cylinder bores, the cylinder wall. 
um, enough to break the glaze off the cylinder wall and give it a really nice crosshatch, freshly machined surface, um, which allows the new piston rings to seat on the cylinder wall. And then of course once the cylinder is honed or bored oversized, um, just the last thing to do is really paint it. Um, we'll go ahead and put a nice fresh coat of paint over the cylinders and we're ready to assemble it. So we put the valves back in, valve springs back in. Um, we always put new rings in, especially with the honed bore. And those new piston rings, uh, we do take the time to gap every ring. Um, even though they're brand new parts, you definitely don't want to just stick them in the cylinder bore because the ring gaps are not always correct. They often need to be uh, gapped larger. So as long as once we've checked all of the ring gaps, we know that our rings fit for that specific cylinder. We go ahead and install them on the, the piston and that piston can be installed in the cylinder. We always, <clears throat> we're now looking like this and so we always install that piston with rings installed, gapped, fitted, it's ready to go. Only thing the mechanic or the owner has to do is just slide that piston out far enough, just far enough to slide the piston pin through. So they don't have to reinstall any rings, they don't have to stuff the rings back into the cylinder bore, but all they have to do is back out that piston enough to stick the piston pin through the piston and the connecting rod, and then just slide the cylinder back down over the piston, and it's ready to go and bolt down on the engine. All right, so like I said, I did ask everybody on Instagram if you had any questions about cylinders, I was gonna to try to answer them in this video. Let's see what we've got here. Pull up some of these questions. Um, here's a good one. Uh, this question is, do you make any bore oversize on cylinders? So yes, like I said, um, part of our process is if the standard bore is worn out um, beyond limits and we still want to use the cylinder because it's not cracked or anything we can certainly bore that cylinder oversize put a 10 thousandths oversized piston in it and now that cylinder can continue running uh, another question we have here is valve guide angles and rocker to valve tip matching shout out to propeller kitten great guy on instagram um, valve guide angles and valve tip matching. So valve guide angles, these are straight valves. There's not much to it on a lot of the continental, larger continental engines like 470s and 520s. The valves are actually coming in at an inclined angle in the cylinder. And then so the rocker shafts are at an angle too. And what you often find is those rocker arms on those angle valve cylinders, the the face of the rocker arm does not line up perfectly flat with the top of the, the valve. And so it's very important on those cylinders, we always like to double check that once the rocker arm is installed and touching the valve, as it comes down to touch the tip of the valve, is it contacting flat and flat, or is it only contacting one side or the other first? And what that's gonna do, if that's the case, if the rocker arm is coming down and just hitting one side like that, it's going to start over time influencing the valve one way or the other. And that is definitely how you get um, early valve guide wear. H. Espinoza, how can you replace the valve guide and how can measure the inside diameter of valve guides? So I kind of told you about replacing the valve guide. Um, a little more specifically on measuring the valve to see if it's worn out or not. Um, let me grab a comparator here. So we have here a comparator. Um, we put different tips on this for different size valve guides, but, and then we set this to the dimension of the valve. And then as we put this down into the valve guide, that, that gauge is gonna go up and it's gonna read how many thousandths bigger than the valve. And that, but depending on the cylinder, we're looking for a different number, but that's how we look to see, are we within our limits or is it worn out? So commonly on an exhaust valve guide, the valve guide should be usually about four to six thousandths. And if we, using our comparator here, find that the valve guide is worn out to 10, 15, even 20 thousand sometimes when it's real bad, then that's certainly when we need to replace the valve guide. Waypoint MRO says, when doing an overhaul, what's all that's been done step-by-step -step process. So that's kind of what this whole video was about. So I definitely just appreciate it if you watch the whole video. 
Um, it's a long process, there's lots to do, cleaning the cylinder, inspect it, make sure it's not cracked, repairing valve guides, seats, replacing valves, all that is necessary, and then um, honing the bore and re-cleaning, uh, painting again, and uh, reassembling and installing the parts for a final time and it's ready to go out the door. And if you could subscribe to this channel, we'd really appreciate that. We'd love to show you guys more videos like this. We have a lot of stuff in this shop to show you and we'll try and continue to take the time to explain more and show you uh, a lot of what we do and everything to do with these aircraft engines.